not. We're not at the table anymore. We're like stretched out, comfortable. I feel cozy. Silver. <laughs> silver Fox it's not Daddy. Silver. It is silver. Silver Fox Daddy. It's the lights. Camera action. I knew you were going to say that. That is so dad of you. Uh, I am a dad now. Isn't he? And he's drinking whiskey and all. I'm a father. On the rock. <laughs> You're a father. Yeah. Congratulations, Shane. I'm so proud of you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're back to another season of Making Sense of Freaking Adulting. You were totally about to say episode. <laughs> you were about no, to say another episode. F word, but I did not want to start the first episode with a hard F-bomb. Because my mother listens. You've, uh, you've said the F word in front of Yeah, Mama but that's Smith. like when I eased into it. I gotta, I gotta let it ease in. Uh, Anyways, <laughs> season three, making sense of adulting. Guys, this season is about to be amazing. What do you, what do you think? Well, give me your thoughts on how this season's gonna Judy go. Judy doesn't look happy about it. I told you I'm not pulling punches this season. I'm done dealing with her shit <laughs> and your attitude. <laughs> And Anthony back there eating cereal, he better have some fucking milk in that shit. Definitely for, dang, you're going to go ham with the first yeah. couple words? Yeah. Dang. I'm back. I ain't pool punches. <laughs> Miss Riddle, are you serious? Your son has a potty mouth. I know. She He's knows. got a beard now. He's drinking He's whiskey. He's not pulling punches this season, so you were last season yes. and the season before. So yes. what does that mean? He's trying to be generous. He's trying to be nice. He's trying to be a good person. Be a good guy? Yeah. Now you're a bad guy yeah. with your big bad beard? I don't give up. <laughs> Looking like freaking Santa Claus over there. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Big put bad your, beard. Put your hair with my beard. We'd be Santa. Santa. Oh, that's Santa. a good point. Oh, it's almost Christmas. I know we were supposed to start in October. And then we're starting like... It is October. Oh, it's right. October right now, but this is going to come out early November. In October. Next in week's November. October. Sunday is Halloween. Did you not know that? Wow. What are you going to be for 1st? Halloween? I don't know. I can't top last year. Last year it was so good. What? I don't even remember what you were. I was a nude. flasher. Oh, you were oh, I yeah, knew. it was I, nude. No, I do remember that. Not she like wasn't I actually wore, nude. She I wore, wore like a, a nude robe. costume. I was. I wore a robe over my flash. My last nude. Halloween was really fun. That was the best Halloween I've ever had. That was a really good Halloween. And Junie doesn't remember it. I don't remember it. That's why Junie. Well, I shouldn't say that. But. <laughs> Well, guys, we're bringing a lot more guests, a lot more real topics. We put out the preview of the topics, and a lot of people were, were very like into it. They were like sliding up on certain ones that they really wanted to hear. So far, Age is Just a Number has had the most reactions. Like? Age is Just a Number. Like When you're dating? For anything. As far as uh, like, we should preface that. <laughs> yeah, all the daddies. Yeah, because you know, for the underage people, it, age is just a number. I mean, <laughs> okay, Junie, we're not thinking about that. I know. Okay, I, my, I, I know. My you head said, did not but go he there. said for he said for anything. So Junie likes girls under eighteen. <laughs> I just <laughs> canceled. <laughs> Cancel me. Canceled. Because I'm the one that said, "Let's watch what we say." And you and I'm yeah. All right. Anyways. I like how now we have a background voice. I wonder if the, if it picks it up. So now we have four people technically, but three and a half. Yeah, so I have my mic here. Anthony will do <laughs> that. That's a, hey, that's how real morning shows do. Like they'll have the fourth person that'll come in and just talk whenever they want to. They'll just come on to the regular morning show. We're gonna make that happen. But today we chat about. I forgot to start the time. It's okay. We've been going on about maybe what five minutes. Cool, 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 cool. You know, first episode, the jitters are uh, need to get out, and you always get nervous first episode. I don't I know, know what it is for everything. Uh, it's like it's why like are you it's nervous. Like, there's a camera on me now, and it's bright. Oh my god! I look light skinned. Look, don't play with your boy. Look, you're y'all coming on YouTube. You're gonna see your boy looking good. He now. never looks light skinned. Oh, but today, do you see this light right here? So what does that make me look? <clears throat> Pale, oh, weirdo. God. Today we talk making sense of adulting. What it means. To adults, where the name even came from, and <clears throat> what are we doing to adults since last season or since we started? I say we go to first season, second season was kind of like Hot Mess Express, yeah. It was like we're just gonna talk because you guys like our voice. Uh, wow, making season, sense of adulting. So, Rodney's grown as an adult, he has now two nose rings instead of one. I've always had 
two nose rings. One of them has just been clear because I don't like to have two in it at all times. Should yeah. uh, should you update our audience? Um, speaking of adulting and relationships have to do with adulting, our show is premised around a lot about relationships. Junie got you, a girlfriend. The way you already talked to her on the last <laughs> I had a girlfriend in season that. two. Dingus. That's why I was like, where are you going with that? I'm I just going had with to shot it out again. Uh, did you not just win a competition, Rodney? Oh, but that's not important. We're talking about adulting. That's not an adulting thing. I think that's your uh, $5,000 is an adulting. A trip to Jamaica is an adulting. No. That Traveling was a, to Canada is an adult. That, that is not normal adulting. Exactly. That was just. I think it is. Okay. That is not making yeah, sense. Yeah, because of every adult in America wins a dating show. <laughs> It's part of it. Did you do it? No. I could have. You could have. Oh, I could have. He was one of the audience. You have a girlfriend. I know. And that's why I didn't do it, Courtney. Okay. Yeah. But if Silence. You, okay. Either right. way, Rodney competed and won a dating show. And he won five grand. That's pretty exciting, though. And that's lit. But that's not adulting. I think it is. I don't want to make the focus about me in a dating show. I don't right? know. I just, I think the audience is. Mr. Riddle, what does adulting mean to you? Uh, what does making sense of adulting mean to well, you? Well, I like to make sense of adulting, but you try to counteract my making sense of adulting by telling me I'm lame all the time. Well, but this is a new season, so let's let's hear it. Let's hear what you have to say. Maybe I've, maybe I've tell changed us about my thought your, process. Hey, tell us about your lame life. I bet I can relate to it. I exactly. bet you could. Because when we first started this, Courtney and I would party all the time. Yep. Correct. Every week, every weekend we did. It's funny how like a year ago we were going out and blowing money. I think adulting number one is starting to plan for your future. I think that setting yourself up for uh, things that are going to go on past your mid twenties because obviously you're going to want to go to you're going to want to travel. You're going to want to uh, go out and spend a lot of time with your friends and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, saving money. Uh, settling down, um, doing things like that in order to set yourself up for when you get in your late 20s and 30s so that you can actually get out of this phase of life of just partying and drinking and getting lit all the time and actually focusing on your craft, who you are, becoming who you want to be in your career and family. I think that that is the evolution of adulting and through this podcast and us doing this for over a year now um, that's has really showed me. Cool. That's cool. Wait a second. This podcast has shown you the transition from the starting to the mid adulting to adulting. I mean, I would say we're in the mid. Yeah, we're still. Mid. I, no, 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 we're definitely all we're of that stuff in the mid. that you said. I agree with you. Like I am starting to realize that, but it gives me so much anxiety. But that's I mean, but isn't anxiety and being stressed about life part of adulting? Isn't overcoming stress and taking life's challenges head on and figuring figuring out a way to overcome it without your parents giving you the answer yes. or without uh, you know somebody always guiding you or, or looking to an adult for advice? Correct. I think what we're going through now, the stress of paying your bills, saving, you looking at buying a house, you went to go see a house, that's adulting, that's stressful, that's real life issues. And I think that... The, the change of when things, little things in your life, whether it's like a, a fight with your friend or something on social media, those things are like childhood problems to have. We're moving, we are in that middle stage where those things aren't start, are starting to not matter anymore. And the real things in life, like buying a house, settling down with somebody, thinking about a family, thinking about where you're going to live, you know, the rest of your life, thinking about like all these things are real life problems and they're real stress. And so for those, how do we deal with them? For those who aren't looking for relationships, does that make them no, 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 no. Because you said you said it's, like but it's part, but it's part of. You, would you not agree that it's, it's not part, part of it for of it. majority of people? <laughs> That's a song, right? I know. <laughs> what song is that? I thought it was by. I thought that was on the it's Disney just Channel. Part of it. with the bear, Jungle Jungle Book. No, 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 no. It's with the moon. He talks to the moon. I know what you're talking about. What are you guys talking Isn't about? I thought it was like it? a, it's a, it's a song right now. I don't know. Yeah, you lost me. Anyways, back to what you were saying. I've said enough. Um, Judy is settling his roots. So you're going to stay here for a while? That is, that is still to be determined. Um, being here over a year, I've realized that Nashville has granted me a lot of opportunities and um, it's a good place to get started, 
but I don't necessarily know if this is the town that I want to settle in for the rest of my life. Really? Um, I, I love it here. I love the people here. But the vibe of this city isn't a place that I call home. It's like it's, this is a transitional place for me. And I feel like it always has been. And I feel like when I got here, you know, it was so new and it was so exciting that I kind of got caught up in everything. But now that I'm just kind of sitting here with like a clear head and, you know, I've kind of got burnt out on the Nashville party scene after doing it for so long. Um, I'm starting to figure out that, you know, Nashville isn't going to be everything for me when it comes down to wanting to settle down, raise a family and actually like dive into my career. Yeah. And I feel that. I just think I, it, this is just this is a party town. This is this is where young people should come to have a good time and to find opportunity because there's so much growing here. There's so many businesses moving here. There's so many people moving from California and New York and other places to start here. This is why this is the fastest growing city in in So, this is this interesting US. because I want to piggyback off of this in terms of adulting. Okay. You're saying a lot of places are moving here. Work is adulting. Yeah. It's not fun, but pe- we have to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- it's just interesting to me that you say you wouldn't want to live here, even though all these people, all these big companies are moving here because the career growth is going to be here. I see, I see this city as a city that moves a million miles an hour. This is, this is when they call it Nash Vegas, they call it that for a reason. This, this city is the Southeastern version of Vegas. Like Nashville is the Vegas of the South. I mean, can we name another city that has a, like a bar scene that has like a celebrity scene that has all the things that Nashville has anywhere remotely close to this area? I wouldn't say, I would say no. Um, it's just, it's a lively town. It's a party town. It's a country town. And that's not that's not kinda, me. But it kind of seems like everybody's moving strictly for something, not just because they want to move there. When did this topic concern me living in Nashville? I don't know, but you know what? That is adulting, like figuring out where you want to stay and yeah. grow. And I think there's like a transitional period for a lot of people. Like you said, somebody w- or you know a group of people will go somewhere for a couple of years. I have a few friends that moved here from Texas yeah. that only want to stay here a couple of years and then go back to Texas. Yeah. But also, I think there's people out there that move to move and stay. So that's actually something interesting that you, you're saying because I think that's a part of adulting is like where are you going to plant and grow and call – when somebody asks you where you're from, yeah. no longer do you answer, oh, I'm from Texas. I now say, oh, I'm – from Nashville. Oh, well, that'll never change. You I, 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 and I, I don't do, I don't do that. I always preface that I'm, I'm from Kentucky and I currently live and work in Nashville. Um, for me, not like Nashville isn't the end all be all for me because I know of three different locations onto which I want to move on to Nashville, relatively speaking, has been a good starting point for me because of how close it is regionally to where number one, I grew up and number two, where I went to school. It was an easy move for me. It wasn't as like, it wasn't as easy for the two of you to move to Nashville. It was was so much easier for me. And with that being said, I want to move somewhere where it's not so easy for me. And I also want to move to a location where it isn't as big of a party and, you know, track like this city, this city is Traffic is horrible. Okay, so with okay, that, do I you can't. think do you think that you have to move somewhere for the right reason? Yeah, I mean, yeah of course. Would you say you would go just because you want to experience something different. So no. as an adult, what's a good reason to move? Like uh, and when you're adulting, what is like you don't when you're an adult, you don't just move because you want to. Yeah. Why not? Well, I guess you could. I definitely think, you, you think I definitely think a lot of people do that. Don't you think that's backtracking? Why? Why do you say? Because like right now you're in the entertainment industry, so if you move somewhere with no job, right, you would be starting over. Well, I think that, I, and again, that's, that is part of adulting because I think in order to do that, you need to find a job in the place where you want to live. Ooh, I, think, I think that's debatable. A lot of people will move at like an older age and then imagine having to restart at a, with somebody that's already up and coming. That's uh, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think it's different for everybody. I think it is different for everybody. And I think if you asked a lot of people like, oh, well, why'd you move to Nashville? Was it a job opportunity? It was like, oh, no, I just moved here just, you know, for the chance of it or just because I wanted to be here. Or, I think a lot of people have done that. I really I, do. I don't think I've met so many people that have moved here just to party or just 
just to be here. No, I'm not saying just. I'm not saying just a party. Yeah, I, I'm saying that well, they see. You're Nash- making it seem like that. <laughs> like people usually come those like, oh, I'm doing music. Right, but then they have a bigger come, side gig. Well, they come here for an opportunity. If I was to move somewhere, it'd be for a certain reason for a job opportunity. But that's just, what I'm saying. Just, but just going. Okay, out and okay, a okay. Risk Enough doing, talking that's... about Nashville. Not everybody gives a crap about it. I sure don't. I didn't. Well, move, I didn't plan on being here that long. So I mean, Junie touched on some good things like settling your roots or getting in a relationship, which you don't have to do. But a lot of people tend to do it when you get to like. 25 plus yeah especially guys i feel like a lot of my guy friends are slowly starting to get in more serious relationships and it just blows my mind because i'm like you're a fricker like you how are you in a relationship you know what i mean but it is because you start to get older and it changes i'm not talking about you oh i'll just make sure everything's about you loser that's a big part of adulting i guess but um career ugh that's a part of adulting. What else? Self. Yourself. Self. Self is, I think, the biggest one of adulting. Like that's, I mean, that's what you guys just went through. You said you started off season one being big partiers, and then over time, a relationship d- didn't change you. Like, you changed yourself to make you a better person. So, like... I think I started changing before my relationship. And I think, and I think so that's something self. that you and I... Yeah. I and I think because of that change... And you know, and you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I I I it's a I, secret. I'm, no, it's no. Just, it was it was it was a certain point in time where it. where we had Rodney and I had a conversation, and I told him that I needed to make a certain choice in my life, or I was gonna, or I was genuinely gonna mess up. You know what I mean? And I thought in order for me to like settle down and kind of get out of the scene and just live a more simple life and focus on work and things that are actually gonna benefit me. That's when kind of things started changing for me. I got into a relationship, it then moved into, you know, more and more things that I am responsible for rather than just going out and partying and having a good time and not really worrying about anything. Yeah. And I think that that's a good thing to do, especially when you move into a, a new city. I met so many people in the year that I spent with Rodney going out and networking and doing all those things. And because of that, it led me to grow and to learn and to make decisions for myself in order to be a more mature person and focus on bettering myself rather than just going out and having a good time. Yeah. Well, I think you just naturally, as you get older, grow as yeah, a person yeah, yeah. and you start to realize like, Oh crap. Cause I honestly think, tell me if you think differently as you get older, you become more selfless like yes. as a, as Wait, yes. yes, like you're not as selfish as you get older. And I'm not just saying in ways of like giving somebody something, but just like thinking about like the bigger picture, not just about yourself. And so it makes you change your actions and think about what's going on around you. For yeah. example, when I was in high one. school, yeah. I thought the world revolved around me and I was going to do what ever the heck Wait, I you wanted still to don't do. Think that? <laughs> okay, okay. I, I do, but I take into account other people around me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's not all about me. I have other people that I care about. And I think that's another important thing as you get older, your relationships actually get a lot deeper. And I never really understood that when we were when you were younger, everybody always said, You think these friends are good now, just wait till you're older. Oh yeah. And I think I've actually seen that come into fruition. You know, like relationships and friendships mean so much more when you're an adult. Yeah. And that's why I think with the selfless thing, I think that's where it's like on the fence because you do, you do start making decisions about your friendships as you get older. And it's just like these friends that you think are like die hard for you, right? Well, if they're not for you, you got to make a decision to get them out no matter how hard mentally it is to try to, you know, kick them out of that space. So I think like, yeah, like self and really doing what's best for you, but like still catering to all aspects of what it could be. Yeah. It's basically, yeah. It's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. And your mind, your mind doesn't stop developing until you turn 25. So you're constantly still changing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me, let me interject here. Go ahead. Men's minds. (laughs) Do not stop <laughs> developing until they're 25. Now, women, Says on who? the other hand, 
<laughs> We're already you. developed by then. Show me the car facts. Your de- your body is developed earlier than men. Your mind does not develop whoa, 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 at a whoa, faster whoa. rate. This has nothing to do about <laughs> my body. <laughs> oh my god. Oh okay. Yes. Yeah. Again. I'm gonna play a game here. Yeah, my body, my brain is in my body. It's already developed. Okay, Courtney, I'm I'm I'm. <laughs> I'm going to body you. All right. I'm going to um, body you. <laughs> bottom line, women's bodies typically quit growing at the age of 18. Men stop growing at the age of 21. Your body and the growth of your body has nothing to do with the growth of your mind. It has zero to do with it. Everyone's mind quits aging and quits mm-hmm. growing and quits developing at the age of 25. He's taking matter. no bull crap this season. We're coming hard. I'm and not, are you 25? Huh? I'm about to be. I'm closer than you. Okay, okay. I wasn't asking in that way. I'm saying because you've matured so much, yes. you're almost done growing that big brain of yours. Yes. <laughs> big head, big brain, smarter than you. <laughs> I want to cycle back around, right? Because we're talking a lot about, and this is what I like about the balance of the podcast is that we're all different, right? But now it's kind of like we have two people in relationships and one that's not, right? So when, when we're talking about what? <laughs> okay, anyways, we're talking. We're talking. <laughs> okay, three. You just want a dating show, boy. <laughs> okay, so like, you know, when you when we talk about the partying, you know that that has to stop, and all the other aspects of that. It doesn't have to stop. You I don't can think have it fun. Has to stop. As, like, no. if I, if I have a baby, I'm still gonna go throw some drinks back. Yeah, because you were on Broadway having the time of your life the other day. Last week. Ooh, yeah. He was lit. It it was a lot of fun. (laughs) So, like, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop everything. So, like, briefly talk about more of, like, the transition of, like, oh, I stopped partying. But when is too much too much? And what's the balance? Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's totally realizing that you have to balance so much more than what we're used to. Like, when I was in college, I sure felt like I had to balance so much with school and partying. But when you're an adult... You have so many more responsibilities. Yeah. And I think it's just realizing like I can't put all my time into being super, super social and going out all the time when I need to take care of X, Y, Z. And honestly, as you get older, your body needs to recoup more. Yeah. Do you think it's capable to take care of X, Y, Z, but still party at the same time? Absolutely. If you have I think some it, I think it depends. I think enhancing. I, th- I think in your case your schedule is much more flexible than Courtney and I's. Yeah. So it's much more, it's a lot easier easier for you to go out and, and do those things. Um, when you're working 40 hours a week, I kid you not, like it, it drains you. Like it, it literally drains you. And it's not even the fact that you're working so much. It's just the mental aspect of it. And it, and it's something that you don't know until you get there and you run on that schedule but I'll say this uh, to answer your uh, original question. I mean, for me personally, uh, getting out of the party scene was more of like a personal thing for me yeah. because I, th- I thought it's, – it's not even that I thought. I know that me partying and the repercussions of that was hurting my image. Yeah. And I don't want people to look down on me on my worst moments because of a personal choice of mine. Yeah. And at a certain point, like I've had my fun. I partied – through college i partied more in college than most people do and i partied you know about a year a year and a half after college and that's fine like i've had my time i've done multiple years of it it just it it gets old well also i think you have to take when you're working a 40 hour week which is tough it's not easy and specifically for my job, I don't know how yours looks, but mm-hmm. I sit behind a screen all day. Yeah. And I have multiple people reaching out to me about different things and it gets overwhelming and my brain is on all day from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Yeah. And so as soon as I close my computer, I am fried. Yeah. My brain is fried. My body's fried. Even though I didn't even like do any hard physical activity it yeah. just takes it out of you it does you know? it does and, and and let me let me add on to what you're saying here because i can completely relate to what you're saying i i do the same thing except you know you and i do completely different things my job is to do the social media for my radio company so i'm doing social media for five different radio accounts and on top of that I have, you know, people in our company who have clients who need to get tickets to certain events and I have to make sure their client gets it and sometimes their client doesn't. And these are people who spend thousands of dollars with us. And these are people that like our sales team 
their income is based off pleasing these people. Right. And sometimes when the communication or they didn't receive the tickets or they can't find the tickets in their email, things get really stressful for me too because I have all these higher ups trying to come to me f- to answer their questions on right. a daily basis. So I know what you mean by like trying to answer emails and on a time crunch and, and the necessity of getting things done in a timely order. And it does. It does wear you out emotionally there's times where i come to go come home from work and i just get so much stuff from everybody like everybody asking and everybody looking to me to have the answers so i'm like i've been in this position for three months yeah and i'm like i'm, I'm 24 years old and it's in at, it, so it wears you out i think that's like i'm kind of getting this from what you're saying too is like as you get older you have to really a big thing is learn how to prioritize things, yeah. you know, even at work, like what's most important to get done, what's not, but outside of work too, it's like, okay, my job, and let's say it's a Wednesday and you get invited to go do X, Y, Z, but you know, you have to be on a meeting at 8 a.m. in the office or something like yeah. that. And you have to pick your priority, you know? And sometimes it is a little like disheartening, disheartening because I feel like I have changed a lot in the past year. You know, like I had a full-time job when I was going bananas last year. I don't know how I did it because now I look back and I'm like, I don't even have time to think about anything when I shut my computer. And, and But that's also part of adulting too for you is because you have been working like working your ass off on getting this promotion, working extra hours. And for me too, I describe to you my daily nine to five. But what I don't tell you is, is that I have to work a lot of weekends. Right. You know what I mean? We're, we're looking for part-time employees to go out and work events. I am our promotional coordinator. So when people can't work events, I have to pick that up. And that means me working a lot of Saturdays, Sunday mornings, early, waking up at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning to go out and do on the grind. an NFL pregame show. And I people, people, and, and I get judged from some of my friends because I don't go out anymore. And Me. it's, it is. Well, here's the thing. I think this time for everybody, we're, and no matter what you do, this is the big thing for young adults. This time in our life is the grind phase. Yeah. It is the grind phase. And I don't care if you're a musician, you're grinding. I don't care if you're working promotions, you're grinding. I don't care if you're doing sales like me, you're grinding. I don't care if you're doing, Ronnie does a million things, he's grinding at all of it. You know what I mean? So it's just whatever you're doing at this age, everybody is working their ass off. And I think that's why stuff starts to change when you're in your early to later 20s. That kind yeah. of takes me back to like back in school when you were like so ready to get out of school and then all your teachers would tell you like i hope you're prepared yeah. for what you're about to get into right and you're in your head it's just like i'm tired of being in class i'm tired of doing this blah blah blah. and then now like you're working a thousand times harder than you had to do in middle school high school and college combined i personally feel like especially when you're trying to make a name for yourself in a fast-moving city something in something like nashville and i think and we've brought this up multiple times but I think what a lot of people don't understand is that when you get out of college, you're not going to jump into a job Absolutely. that's going to, yeah. yeah. number one, be the job that you want for the rest of your life. Never, and ever number would two, it. doing like being doing the grunt work and having to like work your way up and earn your respect in the office. And I mean, for me, like I don't I don't get paid that much. Yeah. Like I have to really like budget and watch how much I spend on certain things and make sure I have enough to put money back in. That has all led to me seizing going out as well, too, because I have a lot more responsibility and things to pay for as well. So um, it's it, it, it's all inclusive. Um, but I think that something I need to work on, though, and I think we can pivot on this. That's actually be my next question. As One thing we should work on is I think I should start trying to go out more. Oh. Because I've I've completely flipped the script. <laughs> that I thought he was gonna of, say. <laughs> I know I'm I'm serious though. I'm yeah. serious though. It's, be, good, it's a good balance. Well, yes, balance, yes, yeah. because it comes to the point where you work your ass off. You're constantly stressed That's out, and, and yes, at certain points it is easier just to with your off time to sit on your ass and and watch a Netflix show and and, and hang out and do nothing. That's all fine and dandy, but at certain times like. You need to you need to keep putting yourself out there, and that's yeah. something that I'm struggling with, and that I need to work on and be better about. I ditto, Junie. Like work life balance 
Because we've never experienced anything like it before. Yeah. You know, like my nanny job or my lifeguard job. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, you know, so I think that's really huge and something to be conscious of as you are in this phase of life is don't cut all the fun out because then that leads to mental health issues. Yeah. And I've experienced that in the last year. But it's okay. Like, that's normal. But you just, you have to find that sweet spot. And I think sometimes it gets hard as an adult. Yeah. yeah. You know, because there, like you said, there's days where you just want to shut up, shut it off and just watch Netflix. But then it becomes a bad habit and you do it all the time. It definitely and I think becomes a bad mixing habit. in social life is okay. And you know what? We all work so hard. Yeah, go celebrate. We all work so then. hard. You got to celebrate you've got to praise yourself you've got to have fun otherwise you are going to end up hating what you do and not feel like you're being appreciated at work because you're not having fun outside of work so I think that's a huge thing it's like I have got to work on that too I really have like I've been kicking myself for it for the past couple of months because I haven't but like I said when I first moved here it was more of like (laughs) life was Way more than work. It was a I new think. City. I yeah. think. It, yeah. It was. It's. It, it was a new town for us. Like we didn't get to live this out, and it was time for us to kind of like let loose. Like, hey, we celebrated. We graduated college. We got our degrees. We moved to a brand new city. We took a big step, and you know, especially for me, serving and then working a part time promotions gig with Titans Radio at the time it was so easy for me to be flexible with my schedule to be able to go out and have just cash on me at, at any given time. And now when you're obligated to be somewhere and at this point I'm like on call, like I could, I've gotten calls at five, six in the morning and I've gotten calls at 10 PM at night over, (laughs) over stuff. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like I'm, I'm on call on the weekends. Like it's, it's insane. Um, but yeah, I just think the it's balance. so important to have that balance yeah, that and balance. let it, what? Let it out. I know we kind of struggle with the same thing, but I'm interested to see if you struggle with something different. Um, as far as like a, in the adulting aspect, yeah. maybe, maybe like different categories, like maybe like money management. Um, what about time management? My you time, you do think, a lot of I stuff. I think my time management is fine. And I, the reason why I think it's good is because when I first moved out here, my parents were worried about it. Like, oh, why don't you have this job yet? You're not making a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. And it was always like, mom, just stay patient. It was like, dad, stay patient, right? Because mm-hmm. my dream that I was chasing wasn't the same as what everybody else was. You know, it was okay for y'all to go for that 95, that 95, that nine to five, right? But I was a person that I can be patient with my success. And most of my biggest success has come from me sucking it up to going out and look like I'm partying. You know, like it looks like my social media is like people ask me all the time, like, all you do is party for a living, blah, blah, blah. When in reality, I'm like meeting with Amazon and then they get me drunk. And then like I'm going to go do this film and then like it looks like we're partying. You know, like everything I feel like I'm doing ties back into my career. Right. I signed those two endorsements, not because I was sticking to what, you know, my parents wanted me to do with the 95. Right. I had to make my social media look presentable. That's where I got my deals from, right? So I just feel like for everybody, it is very, very different. Um, And I think for me more so, it's like if I want to prepare for my future, I think my money management has to get better. Um, And that's not meaning like, oh, I'm broke right now because of the jobs that I'm doing. But I think like my mom tells me all the time, put $5 away. And like $5 can go a long way if you keep doing it every shift. And I just never listen, right? So then I run into these incidents where... Um, my car gets busted out on Broadway and then now I'm $200 short, right? If I would have had maybe the $5 that I would have saved up when I first moved out here, it would have been an easy, easy buy. I right. agree with that because literally with, I, uh, a couple yeah, months ago, exactly. I had started putting about $300, $400 of my check a just mo- straight into saving. Uh, like, yeah. No, every check. Oh, every week? Every, like every, well, it, bi-weekly, Two but weeks. yes. So oh, twice a month, I, I, I put I, about, I, get paid. I put anywhere from 600 to $800 a check into my savings account and then what do you know i make a stupid mistake and i got a brain i got a new car that and i hadn't driven stick in a couple months because of my accident that i had um and i forgot to put the park brake up and my car rolls into a pole (laughs) and absolutely messes up the fender and i make the stupidest mistake but guess what i had money saved up for an instance like that and i was sitting here thinking like wow if I didn't make that decision to start putting money away, I would not, this expense would have been 
an absolute headache, but it exactly. wasn't because I was prepared for it. Exactly. Yeah. So I think like that's one of the more important things for me. Um, my time management prioritizing stuff is, you know, like you said, I do a freak ton of stuff. Yeah. So I got to find a way to manage all of it. And then, like you said, I have a pretty flexible schedule. So um, it's that's that's the easy part. But as far as like money, I think, yeah, prioritizing money for the future is very, very important. So I have a question. We're winding down on time. Um, I have two questions. They kind of go hand in hand. Uh, but what do you all want to see for this podcast this season? And number two, what are some things in a, in the sense of adulting that we want to do to improve on to kind of, I don't know, make ourselves better? For ourselves? Yeah. Okay, so I think for the podcast, I really want to, you know, my my goal for the first season was to have fun. Second season, it was to be serious. So I think this season, I want to kind of tie all of it in together. Uh, the attention that we've got from the podcast, you know, still amazes me. When I'm out at the bar and people are just like, when's the podcast coming back? Or, you know, like today at work, and they're like, oh, like, aren't you podcasting today? And it's just like, people are noticing the podcast, right? So I want to find a balance that's fun and serious at the same time. You yeah, know, we took that risk second season and our numbers dropped because we wanted to hit the adulting category too hard. And we lost out on the fun that we were having from the first season. So I think there's anything I want to get out of this season is that finding that balance for both and continue to like spark people, you know, that reach out and that enjoy the podcast and that want to listen to it and ask us when it's coming out and stuff like that. So catering to our audience, but also catering to what we initially started from the jump. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, too, because I feel like last season we like being honest with ourselves. We did not have as much fun as we did the first no, time around. No. And I think like that's the magic behind it. And you can tell when we're talking that we're having so much more fun when we actually are. Yeah, I 100%. also think it's really cool that people are going to be able to see us because that makes us feel real. I yeah. guess. Yeah. So if you didn't know that, you can watch us now, which is super cool. I think we're putting it on YouTube. I'm not yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, YouTubing it. So that's really cool. We're finally doing that because, you know, last season we were going to start it, but I spilt water on the computer and we had to figure <laughs> that out. So here we are. So I'm excited for that. But personally, I think for my adulting life, I'm going to try to make it more balanced. And see if I'm happier because I've been struggling with that lately. Like today, side story really quickly. I got a puppy too, by the way. He is the cutest little thing. He is cute. But Annoying, I've been trying to teach cute. the little fucker how to do tricks. And he knows how to do them. But he just is so sassy he won't do them. But today I took him outside and I had a tennis ball and I was like, sit. He, I know he knows how to sit, but we've been working on lay down. And I looked at him and I said, lay down. And he just laid down and I got so excited. Reed, Reed looked at me and he said, I haven't seen you that excited in so many months. And it was over the damn dog laying down. So I need to do more things for myself yeah. because Courtney the dog laying fun. down was the best thing that happened to me in a long time. <laughs> I think for myself, one, it's going to be um, myself, like just working on myself, period, like in all aspects. You know, I was just... um but you're you know, always doing that. No, no, no. You know this firsthand. There was like people that I was leading on. There was, pe there, there was people that I was talking to because I was comfortable. I was having way too much fun, right? And it was fucking me up mentally. Mm -hmm. And it was putting me in a terrible spot. And it, and it's because I didn't want to, I don't like, I'm a people pleaser. You know, Virgos are people pleasers. And we don't like, you know, killing people's feelings, right? So I think I just need to be more. Is that what the stars told you? That's <laughs> That's how they aligned up. They said I need to be nicer. But uh, yeah, no, just actually doing things um, that make sense for myself and everything that I have going on. Like I just, I don't want to mess up anything that I have going on and being stupid and drinking too much and then driving and shit like that. You know, it's just stuff that can ruin my everything that I built up. Yeah. So I think just learning for real, for real about myself and switching up a lot of shit needs to happen. Okay. What about you, Juni? Uh, for the podcast, um, I'm going to kind of touch on what both of you said. Obviously, uh, second season, we didn't have as much fun as we did the first. And I like the idea of com like combining the seriousness aspect, the video aspect, um, and just enjoying it more. Um, and I think, and I think that's going to come, but 
I think the consistency of this podcast and just continually putting out a good message and us being authentic and, and continuing to grow like we have been is what I see for the podcast. For me personally, um, something that I need to rework on, uh, which I did work on and I've since lost, was um, my sense of patience. I used, I used to be um, a very patient person and I think that due to me working and being more stressed and being more tired and easily aggravated, I've kind of lost sense of that. And I think I need to re-harness and re-grab um, that sense of, hey, it's going to, like, not everything is the end of the world. Like, take a deep breath. It's going to be fine. Like, there's a, there's, there's a solution to this. You know what I mean? Yeah. In, I like instead, that. instead of, like, yeah, instead of... Um, deep thought. <laughs> yeah, I just think, I just think, in the general aspect of it, looking at the big picture rather than just the moment. Looking at the big picture. Yeah. And on that, that is adulting. That, yeah, I just, baby. I just love how the the difference from first season to now has just changed in our voices and our lifestyles and everything. And like that's just if you want living proof of making sense of adulting, like listen to an episode from the first season and listen to the episode from the second, and then listen to <laughs> one in the upcoming episodes. Like it just explains exactly why we were a fucking top five podcast in adulting. We yeah. are doing this shit, and on that note. Thank you for tuning in to the first episode of season three, Making Sense of Adulting. It is your boy, Radio Rod. I forgot to say it from the beginning. And we're signing out right now. Audi. Later.